Okay, well, I hit the wrong button. I didn't, <laughs> I didn't mean to sign off so quickly on that. Sorry about that. Um, this is kind of the shortcut way to do it. The long way to do this is actually the probability of G. If you want to do this the long way, the probability of G divided by the probability of not green is equal to 9 out of 44 divided by 35 out of 44. And if you do that, it reduces to 9 over 35. I shouldn't have done that. This is 9 over 44 divided by 35 over 44, which is 9 over 44 times 44 over 35, which becomes 9 over 35. So sorry about that. I just kind of jumped to the end on it. Okay. Our next one, what is the probability of drawing a blue marble, replacing it, and then drawing a yellow marble? Okay, here's the key, replacing it. This means they are independent events. We're not changing the bag. Okay. So if I want to find the probability of a blue and a yellow, then that is the probability of blue times the probability of a yellow. Okay, so the blue, there are 8 out of 44. Yellow, there are 15 out of 44. If you multiply this, you get 120 divided by 1936. You can use this answer or if your calculator reduces it to 15 over 242. But make sure you're, again, as always, you're showing your work. Okay. Now our next one, the probability of drawing a green, keeping it, and then drawing a red. Keeping it means this is going to be dependent. We're changing what is in the bag. What happens the second time depends on whether or not we got it the first time. Okay, so this is going to be the probability of a green times the probability of a red given green. Okay, so the probability of a green, we know that. That is going to be 9 out of 44. But now one of the greens is gone, so we no longer have 44 marbles. We only have 43 and the probability of drawing a red, there are still 12 reds in there. So if I do my multiplication, that's 108 divided by 1892, which becomes 27 over 473. And again, either one of those answers on it will be fine on the test. All right, what is the probability of drawing a yellow, keeping it, and then drawing another yellow? Once again, this is dependent. So what I want to do is find the probability of a yellow and then find the probability of a yellow given a yellow. Well, if I start with my original 44 marbles, I have 15 yellow, but with one of them gone, I now only have 43 marbles, and I only have 14 yellow. So again, when I do the multiplication on that, um, the reduced form is, oh, I can't read my own writing. Uh, 
105 out of 946. And that's the reduced form. Okay, um, what is the probability of drawing a green marble, replacing it, then drawing a blue marble, keeping it, and then drawing a yellow? Okay, so we've got three events here. So the probability of drawing a green, so that's the probability of a green, we replaced it so that's dependent. Then we need to find the probability of a blue, and then we kept it, so we're going to find now the probability of a yellow given that one of the blues is gone. Okay, so the probability of a green we know is 9 out of 44. The probability of a blue is 8 out of 44. We've kept a blue now, so one of the blues is gone. We only have 43 marbles left, and 15 are yellow. So that gives us 1,080 divided by 8, 3, 2, 48. And that can be reduced, but again, it doesn't matter one way or another. Okay, let's look at a deck of cards. And I've just printed out a couple. You have some on your handout, so if you ever want to print one to play with, you absolutely can. Um, a standard deck of 52 cards, so that means that our total is 52. Okay, so we know what the suits are. We have clubs, spades, hearts, diamonds, 52 cards, 13 in each suit, so there are 26 black and 26 red. So the probability of drawing a black card. Well, there are 26 black cards out of the total of 52, which reduces to one half. Okay, what is the probability of a red king? Well, if I look at the deck of cards, there are two red kings out of the 52 cards, and that reduces to 1 over 26. Now, here is where we usually have problems, is when we get into an OR statement. This is where we are going to end up adding. If it's an AND statement, we multiply. If it's an OR statement, we add. And we have to check and see if they are overlapping or non-overlapping event. So let's <clears throat> look at this and see what we can come up with. So if I start out with the probability of a black card, okay, here are all the black cards. Or the probability of a queen. There are the queens. And notice what we have here is we have an overlap. So what I have to do for this is find the probability of a black card plus the probability of a queen minus the probability of black and queen. Now remember when we were doing our Venn diagrams, we would have, that would be the overlap in the middle. So these would be our black cards. These would be our queens. And in here, that would be our overlap. Those would be the black queens. Okay, so I've used up all my space. I'm going to have to write really little. Actually, I'll just do it up here. So the probability of a black is 
26 out of 52. The probability of a queen, there are 4 out of 52. And then we have to subtract out these two in the overlap. And let's see, what does that give us? 26 plus 4 is 30, so that's 28 over 52. And again, you can leave it just like that, or you can um, do it a different way. Or you can reduce it. So these are overlapping. Well, what is the probability of a jack or an ace? Once again, this is an or statement. A jack is right here. An ace is right here. These are not overlapping. So this is just going to be the probability of a jack plus the probability of an ace, which is just the jacks there are 4 out of 52, the ace there are 4 out of 52. Remember, since my denominators are the same, I add the numerators. So this is 8 out of 52. And again, reduce or don't reduce. Okay, the next one, what is the probability <coughs> that a card is both a spade and a diamond? So I'm looking for and means the overlap. So I'm looking for the spade and a diamond. Well, the probability is zero. <coughs> a card cannot be both a spade and a diamond. <coughs> okay, and then for our last one, I'm out of maps or um, things, so I'll just use another one. What is the probability of drawing a card that is a red or a black? So I'm going to add these two. So here's the red. Here are the black. And you can see that it's everything. So the probability is one. A card must be red or black. So it's so important to look at the wording and make sure that you are understanding what is and and what is or. Okay, um, let's go on to the next part, which is about expected value. And I think just to give it a quick break here, I we will switch videos.